Hello aviators, welcome back to The Finer Points. Um, in this video we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, this is going to be a reaction video. So I'm going to show you guys a clip of a student pilot out on his first solo. Um, and he has a kind of stall spin accident during an attempted go around. And um, I don't have all of the details on this, so keep that in mind. But there are great learning takeaways, at least two of them. Uh, without having any information at all. So first, let's just watch this whole thing. Uh, you can see the pilot coming in here. We do have information on his speed. He's doing 55 knots over the ground and the winds are calm. So he's a little slow, uh, but not dangerously slow. Just definitely on the slow side. Uh, you can see that he kind of runs out of energy. He bounces the aircraft and out of the bounce, he decides to go around. Uh, he pitches up for the attempted go around and then you can see the airplane stall and start to rotate left. Uh, fortunately, he impacts the ground before anything really bad can happen. He wasn't too high up, so he broke the plane, uh, but he was okay, thankfully. So we're happy about that. Now let's look at just a couple things that jump out to me about this. One is you can see when he bounces here that this would have been recoverable. Um, it seems to me that from this altitude right here, he should have been able to simply just wait for the airplane to start settling toward the ground again and then resume flaring to get rid of any extra energy. Uh, if he felt he was coming down hard, maybe add a little bit of power to cushion the, the sort of impact back with the runway. Uh, but there's no reason he shouldn't have been able to land that. Um, and I did a video that, showed the, you know, that shows the three possible outcomes from a balloon or a bounce. Um, and so you can go check that out if you want. It's linked here. But the main thing is, in a bounce or in a flare or anytime you're low to the ground with the nose high, you have to know where to look in the airplane. And I see so many students that just look straight ahead as the nose comes up and their instructor tells them to pull, pull, pull or flare, 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 but they're just looking at blue sky. There's no valuable data there. Um, so what I teach people and what is all over our ground school app, if you're not familiar with this concept, is the Lindbergh reference. Right, that is the, the lower corner of the forward window so that as you lose the horizon and only after you lose the horizon, you just kind of let your eyes roll to the left and in almost all airplanes, there is a place out there to get the information. There's more information on our website uh, or definitely in our ground school app, but through that reference, you can get all of the information you need. You can see information about pitch. If you're pitching up, you can see yaw, you can see roll, you can see everything you need to see through the Lindbergh reference. And it's not just valuable for landing, uh, stalls, slow flight, uh, landing, soft field takeoffs, I mean, all sorts of stuff. So if you're not familiar with the Lindbergh reference, definitely come to learnthefinerpoints.com and learn more about it. Um, but that's the main thing, is that in a flare or a bounce, you have to have a good spot to look for valuable data that will help you control the airplane. And, you know, finding valuable data in the airplane is not as easy as it sounds, right? We spend a lot of time trying to teach pilots to sort of get their head out of the cockpit, right? To use, to try to visualize what's happening with the airplane by using the small, in, the little bit of information you get from the visual references that are available inside the airplane. And that's, that's quite an art, you know? And that's why when we film all the lessons for our ground school app, we're not putting cameras on the tail or on the wings or, you know, who, who cares what the maneuver looks like from the top of the tail? What we're doing is mounting cameras in every student pilot perspective so that when you get in the airplane you're flying, you do know where to look to get the data you need to effectively control the airplane. All right, the second thing here is this attempted go around. Now, I saw some people online saying it looked like maybe the seat rails unlocked. That's not what it looks like to me here because the, the pitch up is not uh, abrupt enough for that. It looks intentional to me. There is some debate as to whether or not the pilot added power or not. So let's just look at either situation because they're both a great review. And, and at the end of the day, this pilot crashed because he botched the go around. Let's assume he added power and you can kind of, it's a hard because of the angle, but you can kind of see in this moment right here, there is a slight yaw to the left so i'm going with he did add power but he the, the flaps are still down the nose was pitched up at a very slow airspeed so when he added power he's climbing at this very very slow close to a stall like just before the power on stall and then he leaves ground effect all right when he leaves ground effect the drag increases the aircraft stalls and and we can see the result um, either that or he pitched up and forgot to add power, just sort of like a deer in the headlights moment, in which case you're definitely going to run out of energy. And you can see also as he leaves ground effect, he stalls. So I think it's a great reminder for 
um, all pilots to just practice the go around. And so let's just review some basics about landing. You want a stabilized approach, ideally something a little faster than 55 knots. You want to use an aiming point. Okay. You want to have an abort point in mind saying if my wheels aren't down by a certain point, I'm going to go around and that go around has to be full power and right rudder at the same time. Reduce the pitch slightly as you raise the flaps in increments. And then when you get to the indicated airspeed, not the sight picture you used to, but the indicated airspeed that will get you the best rate of climb away from the ground or the best angle of climb, whatever you're looking for, then you sort of follow that airspeed. Now you set a sight picture that will hold that airspeed, control the left turning tendencies of the engine and climb away uh, from the ground. So at the end of the day, this was a botched go around, which may be a great reminder for people out there just to practice. It's so easy when you're practicing landings to forget about it, but make sure you practice that go around. Give yourself an abort point when you're practicing that's make it hard for yourself. <laughs> make it hard on yourself so that sometimes when you're practicing, you actually do go past that point and you actually do have to go around. Just don't make the go around something you, you, know, you only do in theory or you only describe. Make sure you practice it to build in the muscle memory so that you don't have an accident like this. And now those are the big takeaways for me. The first thing is making sure you have a good spot to look during the flare or any time the nose is high. So use your Lindbergh reference. And the second thing is make sure that when you add power in a go around, you bring in some right rudder. You might have to reduce the pitch slightly as you climb away from ground effect, bring your flaps up in increments, and then set a new sight picture that holds the indicated airspeed that you know works. All right, aviators, I hope you enjoyed that little reaction video. I'm glad that everybody was okay in that accident. Uh, make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment below if there's another video you'd like to see. I'm going to start to do some of these reaction videos. Also, a huge thanks to the patrons. Without that support, these videos just wouldn't be possible. And there's lots of stuff going on at Patreon, content coming there every month, uh, every week rather, and video hangouts with me every month. Lots and lots of bonus stuff there. So if you want to support the finer points and get bonus content, check out Patreon. Also, a huge thanks to the sponsors. Remember that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. And of course, a huge thanks to you all, the best fans on the internet. I'm Jason Miller. Thanks for watching this video. Please share it far and wide with your friends. And until next time, be safe and fly your best.